Last Sunday evening, my husband Chris arranged for us to attend a Zoom concert of a musician he greatly admires called Adam Ben Ezra. We clicked the link and gathered digitally from quite literally around the globe to listen and enjoy the passion, skill and beauty of Adam's music. And as he played and interacted with us, people expressed appreciation and admiration in different ways. And it struck me that as human beings, there is something in us which responds to what we love and admire and longs to reach out and express it. People valued the opportunity to thank Adam for his music and wanted to tell him how he had inspired them. A heart response which reaches out in gratitude and praise. And this instinctive response gives us a glimpse into what it is to worship. Ignatius of Loyola wrote that human beings were created to praise, reverence and serve God. That these things are part of our core nature and identity. That the most natural and right response to being made and given life is to turn to the Creator who loves us more and better than we will ever be loved by another creature and say, wow, and thank you. Like the psalmist's exuberant declaration, let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Like the prophet's instruction to sing to the Lord, for he has done glorious things. Like Mary's wondrous outpouring in the Magnificat, my soul glorifies the Lord and my spirit rejoices in God my Saviour. Awe and gratitude sit at the heart of worship. In this life we may love and admire many things, but our worship is rightly reserved for God. To allow anything else in that place disorders our world and distorts our purpose in it. Our worship should orient our hearts and our lives towards God, allowing God to be reflected back and be present in our words and actions. Words and actions. Worship is about the whole of our lives. If ever there is a disconnect between what we profess with our lips and what we live in the everyday, then our worship has gone wrong. The prophet Amos offers a stark warning to a people who had kept up kind of religious observance worship but lived in an age of increasing disparity between rich and poor. His message from God was, away with the noise of your songs. I will not listen to the music of your harps, but let justice roll on like a river, righteousness like a never failing stream. When we rightly orient ourselves and our lives towards God in our worship, we don't get tunnel vision. Rather, our eyes are more fully opened up to the world and the plight of those around us. Our worship opens us up to greater love of God and greater love of neighbour. And when we see our neighbour in poverty, our actions are part of our worship of God. And when we see our neighbour being oppressed, our actions are part of our worship of God. And when we see our neighbour abused, our actions are part of our worship of God. So let's worship God together, turning to God in wonder and gratitude, offering words and songs of praise. And let's open our eyes to the plight of those around us and worship God in seeking justice for all people. <laughs>